BYU really? It's not really enjoyable. You will get no yards on the ground. A few moments later. It's just. Here's a quick throw out to the left. Really? First down. It's complete to the left. Touchdown, Fighting Irish. That's right. You need two minutes for him to get a touchdown. For 75 yards. I need 48 seconds. They'll run the option. Oh no! He'll toss it. No, I can't. Plan. Let's see guy? what. If you guys are looking for fast, cheap, reliable coins for your college football 25 team, check out my coin sponsors at MMOXP and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. The champ is here! Welcome back, Money Team. This is Matt Money Shot, sniffing out the college football cheese as always. In today's video, we got another gameplay with our BYU Cougars. I'm going to show you guys an offense that I've been running that I think is absolutely unstoppable. And the guy that I'm going to be playing against is using a much better team once again, one of the best teams in the entire game in the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. And the second that he saw my team, he was already questioning how easy of a game this is going to be. BYU really? It's not really enjoyable. So I guess he thinks this is going to be an easy game, and you know me, I love a good trash talker. But before I get into the video, if you guys want to see more videos like this, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit like button, leave me in the comment section. Other than that, if you need more help and more money plays, you can download any of my ebooks instantly simply by clicking the links in the description or the top pinned comment. The offense I'm going to be using today is an offense that I mentioned in yesterday's defensive gameplay video where I started using the gun spread flex, which is one of the reasons that I really started to like using this team. I also showed a one play touchdown in that video from this very offense, so if you guys want to see more, I'll have links in the description for that video as well as on screen at the end of the video, so stick around for that. For my audible plays, there's so many plays in this formation that I like that I really can stay in this offense the entire game, and that's exactly what I'm going to do here. There's only two pass plays that I need access to at all times, that's the inside cross and the Z spot, and that's because these are the two hardest pass plays to defend so i'll be using them throughout most of the game if i'm in a situation where i have to pass more or i want to push the ball down the field i'll also have the pa deep outs as one of my audible plays after that you're going to need one inside run and one outside run you can use something like the read option but i find that the inside zone probably has the best blocking out of all these plays but I like to use the RPO read screen, and that's because I can either run it inside, which this play has, but I really keep this here because I want the bubble screen, which is really going to be more valuable. So I'm really trying to do a dual purpose thing here, but make no mistake about it. The inside zone has the best blocking, as it really feels like they nerfed the run blocking when it comes to RPO plays, since they're already pretty overpowered. You also need a good outside run, and you have a lot of options for that as well. If you have a fast receiver, you can use either the jet touch pass, or they also have a play called the shovel option, which will give you the option to throw it inside or outside and then there's also a really good play called the load option which is another play where you could throw it to a fast receiver out of the slot me personally though i find the best one to use is the regular speed option and once again this is all about versatility as i find that i could run inside with this better as well now when it comes to this offense i'm always trying to run the ball first so i'm going to go over the reads for whether you want to run the ball inside or outside if you want to run the ball inside the first thing you're going to want to do is a box count you're going to want to count how many defenders they have inside the tackle box since i only have five Five blockers up front if he has five defensive players or less in the tackle box I can run one of my inside runs but on this play I don't really see a lot of gaps as I'll typically prefer to run an inside run if I see larger gaps up the middle my next read for an outside run would basically be this defensive end here with the P above his head as he's the only defender that can really stop this pitch if he's in close to the right tackle like this typically the right tackle will pick him up and not even allow him to get off to the point where he can even defend the outside so whether I choose to use the jet sweep, the load option, the speed option, it really doesn't matter. I just have to make sure this defensive end is not outside of the right tackle. And that's because if he is outside the right tackle, he'll typically have a better chance of stopping the play. On this first play though, for whatever reason, the right tackle misses the block entirely and he plays it perfectly. As I make a pre-snap read and pitch it out anyway, you will get no yards on the ground. And my opponent's chirping up already. And now that he pushed me back, I'm going to try to pass the ball in the next play. To read between my pass plays, I'm just going to look at this slot receiver right here and since this defender is nowhere near him i could easily switch over to the rpo and get plenty of yards but when i pull up my audibles i see that i did not put the rpo in my offense or else that would have been a big play right here but since that receiver is uncovered at the start of the play i know that my opponent is in a zone coverage so i switch to the next best play for that which is going to be the z spot 
The Z spot is a play that I could run against man or zone, but since I know that it's a zone coverage, all I have to do is put the B receiver on a streak so I can pull back the zone coverage for the corner route to get open underneath it. And I have my choice to put the running back on either a out route or a Texas route, as this a lot of times will get open over the middle of the field. And those are basically going to be my two reads as I see the tight end just sitting on the sideline to connect for a first down. Once the play is over, since I don't want to miss that opportunity again, I immediately go to my audibles and switch out the PA deep out for the RPO play. But I like to constantly mix up my plays to keep it fresh when my opponent never knows what I'm doing. So on the next play, I decide to come out in the jet sweep. But since I'm running to the sideline, and this defensive end is once again outside of my right tackle, I know that I can't run this play. I'm going to make a pass play read once again. And since I see that that cornerback is essentially man aligned, I have a choice between two different plays. The Z spot, which I just ran, which will get open to the outside, or I could run the inside cross. And basically run a double drags concept between the running back and the receiver, as both will essentially get open. So since I want to mix it up and not run the same play all the time, I choose the inside cross. And once I see the running back gets more separation in the drag route, it makes it an easy decision, especially since he's on the open side of the field and will have more catch and run space. On the next play, it looks like he might be man aligned as we have that slot receiver covered up. So I decide to go with the speed option. So I can try to take advantage to all the space to the wide side of the field. And even though this defensive end is outside my right tackle, I can still beat him as long as I make the right decision on the pitch. As he's very aggressive and crashes down right on the quarterback right away, and I pitch it out for an easy 15 yard carry. I also like to run the slip screen from time to time, but I notice that when you're playing top tier teams like this, that a lot of times your blocking just doesn't hold up long enough. On the next play, when I come out and read my keys, I can see that I have an obvious man alignment on the slot receiver once again, but I can also see that the box count is off, as he does have five guys in the box, but there's one linebacker being pulled out on the tight end. So I decide to switch to my inside run play, as I see plenty of gaps up the middle, and I know that if I can get past this defensive tackle here, there's plenty of room before I get to the safeties. But the only way to run an RPO play properly is to always watch the defender in front of the bubble screen to see how he reacts, and even though it looks like a man coverage, on the next play, he actually comes on a blitz, meaning that the safety was responsible. So I throw it out right away, and I still get a very big play. Really? despite my pre-snap read reading man coverage. On defense though, I'm running a new dime cover defense. On the first play, it works out pretty good, but he must have saw that I was in a cover three match as everybody and their mother is suddenly running the slot fade concept against this defense. What? And yeah. let's hold on just a minute. And at first it said it was incomplete, but then they did a booth review and said that he caught it. Oh, this thing where it's supposed to be at our spot. And that puts him inside the 20 as he scores on the next play in a little flat route to the running back and he makes both my defenders miss. Oh. And you better believe he's letting me hear about it. That's right, you needed two minutes for him to get touched on for 75 yards. I need 48 seconds. Yeah, but you're also using Notre Dame, bro. Back on offense, I come out of the jet sweep again, but when I read my keys, I see this defensive end is outside the tackle. And this slot receiver is uncovered, so we switch to the RPO and get a couple of yards even though I'm on the short side of the field. On the next play, I come out of the jet sweep again, and even though this defensive end is wider, I know that sometimes he'll still get picked up, and if he does, then I could cut it short inside. And you can see here that he does get picked up as we take it wide with our fastest receiver to get another big carry on the ground. Back on offense, my opponent is becoming wise to my scheme as I see an obvious zone alignment once again, so I go to switch to the RPO play to take advantage of this slot receiver, but he switches to a man zero blitz before I can even get Get the play called. So I accidentally switch back to the speed option and since I don't want to get a penalty for making too many adjustments I just run it and try to get what I can. Another good play to mix in here is the wide receiver mid screen but this really only works against zone coverages as a lot of times a man defender will follow the B receiver and blow up the play. He runs a zone coverage but for some reason somebody's just standing around and through the confusion the ball just gets hit. So on the next play, when I see that slot defender, I see he's in a man coverage once again. So go back to the inside cross. As these crossing routes will get open against just about any single defense, but I also have the 10-yard in above that to the tight end. So all I have to do is watch which way the coverage shades, and if the mid-read drops down on the crossing routes, I can throw over the top to this breaking in route as we get another big catch run to get in the field goal range. I force the jet sweep on the next play, and I don't cut it back up inside quickly enough as we take a loss of a couple yards. So on the next play, we decide to pass, and now we're going to go back to the Z spot spot as anytime I see there's a linebacker missing from the middle of the field right here I know this Texas route is going to get wide open over the center of the field as he splits the zones very easily for another first down and I notice that he's using this defensive end a lot so on the next play even though he has outside leverage I go right at him and he makes a horrible read as he runs right around the play allowing me to get the pitch out for another big run 
And now since I want to run inside on third and short, I switch out one of my audible plays to the inside zone just in case I need it. As this play really has the best inside blocking. And on the next play, I look at that box count once again as that linebacker is pulled out in a man assignment on the tight end. So we switch over to the inside run to easily get the first down. Before we want to use up that outside space once again. So even though that pitch defender could possibly get in the way of this play, I'm going to run this anyway. Oh, no. As he gets around, but I get that pitch out. No, I can't. I get but we left him an eternity on the clock in college football, so we're going to have to play some defense. As he goes right down the field on me before trying to use that slot fade play one more time. And it would have worked too. How about new? But we click on and make an adjustment and we're all over that. And now with only 23 seconds left and needing to push the ball down the field, we switch over to the PA deep outs. As it looks like he's in a cover two man, but this wide receiver typically can get open right between the safeties. As we take a chance to bomb it up even though the coverage was tight, and come down with it in a crowd of three defenders. Man, what let's see what it looks like he's still in man cover two on the next play. Pretty much every one of these in and out routes all beat man coverage. As we hit the tight end to get into field goal range. I try to get a little bit closer to make the field goal a little bit easier. But the out route gets played very well as Notre Dame has some really good cornerbacks. Nope. So I have to kick a field goal from here. Which should be pretty easy. But we don't let the power bar fill up the entire way. So that's going to be the score at halftime. In the second half, he gets ball, and his offense is just overpowering my 74 overall BYU defense, as it becomes very reliant on the running back, going to him on three straight plays. So on fourth down, I decided to use it myself, and I thought he wouldn't throw them when he saw how tight the coverage was, but he threw them anyway. Before running an RPO right at my blitzing cornerback to get wide open for his tight end to get inside the red zone. Before finishing the drive by overpowering my smaller defense. Damn it! But sometimes the best defense is just a good offense, is all I have to do is hold this ball for about 3 minutes and 49 seconds, go down the field and kick a field goal, and this is the perfect dink and dunk offense to do that. So instead of putting this running back on a Texas route, I'm going to put him on an out route, as this will just guarantee that I can get a couple of yards and keep the clock moving. And it looks like he's running man coverage about every single time, so we switch to the inside cross, hit the running back once again, and get another first down and a big catch and run. On the next play, I watch that slot receiver one more time and I see man alignment. And I realize I haven't hit him with a zig route all game. So we go back to the Z spot. And this play is an absolute rack monster as we hit him on the zig and catch him run to get about midfield. Thank you. Windows tinted on my ride when I drive it. On the next play, I think that I read man coverage. So I watch the running back in the flats as my opponent must be using a coverage shell. But when I notice it's a zone coverage, I have to make my read all the way across the field from the in route to the out route who's just sitting wide open on the sideline. From here, he's got to get a stop or the game's over. And on the next play, I try to run that jet sweep one more time, but we get stuffed. And on the next play, I think I read zone coverage once again, so I try to hit the corner out, but it was an actual man coverage, and somehow this guy made up ground and knocked the ball out. What? But that play was there, so I go right back to it and hit the toe tap this time. Fuck you! Before switching over to the inside zone, as I really don't care how much yards I get now, as I'm more concerned about getting too many yards. So on the next play, I go back to the RPO, watch that slot cornerback one more time, and zip it out for an easy first down. But like I said, I don't want to score here. I want to end the game with ball in hand. So I hit the drag around the next play, and make sure to die right on the one yard line before giving dudes some knees, and letting the clock tick all the way down to two seconds before I hit the game winning field goal. Time to check in on my opponent to see how he feels about that game. And he was surprisingly quiet for the entire second half. So I'm going to go to my end of the video there. But if you want to see more from this offense, I also went over it a little bit yesterday. So just click the link on screen. And until next time, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team. Where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.